So in this question, we're going to do impairment, but we're going to do it under the rational entity model. So IFRS allows for the rational entity model. So this is for publicly traded companies. So we'll be focusing on part B. So the first thing that I need to do is record the journal entry at December 31st, 2020 in order to see if there's impairment. So when we test for impairment under this model, what we're going to look at is if the carrying amount is greater than the realizable amount. So the carrying amount is just my cost minus my accumulated depreciation. So in this case, the cost is the 10 million and the accumulated depreciation is the 2 million. So we'll put 10 million here and 2 million here. So that leaves me a difference of 8 million. So that's the carrying amount. Now the realizable amount is actually made up of two categories. So then it's the greater of the fair value minus the cost to sell or, so I'll just say greater of, the value in use. And that's just basically your present value. So that's discounted cash flows. So if I go up here, let me take a look. So the fair value is 6.2 million and the cost to sell is really big. Okay, so the fair value minus cost to sell. So that's 6.2 million minus 50,000. So I'll put it in here. 6.2 million minus 50,000. So that ends up being 6150000. And now the value in use is this just the discounted cash flows. So I'll highlight that in a different color. The discounted cash flows is 6350. So since we're looking at the greater of those two, then we're going to compare that to, so this one's bigger. So we're comparing that to the carrying amount. And the carrying amount of 8 million is bigger than the greater of either the fair value or, or the value in use of the 6350. So we just proved that it's impaired. So in this case, what we'll end up doing is just writing it down to the recoverable amount. And under the this uh, impairment model, we're actually allowed to write it up and down when the fair value changes. So just the difference of 8 million minus the 6350 equals, see here, Let's 
$1.65 million. So that's how much we're going to do the journal entry for. So I'll just say December 31st, 2020. We're going to debit loss on impairment for the difference. And then we're going to credit accumulated depreciation. Or actually, accumulated impairment losses. equipment. So we'll set up another contra asset account for that one as well. So loss on impairment and accumulated impairment losses equipment. So that's the journal entry to write the carrying value down to the recoverable amount. So under both the cost recovery model and the revaluation model, our journal entry for the impairment, the names are the same, so we're hitting the same accounts on the balance sheet. It's just the amounts are different because our impairment tests are different. So when December 31st comes along, we have to record the amortization. So depreciation expense and then accumulated depreciation. Equipment. So we just had a change in estimate. So now since the new value on our books is this amount, 6350, we would, using straight line, do the 6.35 million minus zero residual, and there was four years left at the end of 2020, so that makes our depreciation amount one five eight seven five zero zero. So remember, change in estimate is just dealt with prospectively, meaning we just change the values and then we just move forward with the new information. So then in the next part, it says, the equipment's fair value at December 31st, 2021 is 6.5 million. Prepare the journal entry, if any, to record the increase in fair value. So under the revaluation model, we're actually allowed to write it back up, but there's only one caveat. It's, we can reverse the impairment loss. However, we cannot increase it in value to more than what its original carrying amount would have been net of the depreciation if we didn't originally record the first impairment loss. So you just have to keep that in mind. Okay, so what would I do? We need to keep track of the old carrying amount. So the old carrying amount was the original cost of 10 million. And my accumulated depreciation was 2 million. And then the carrying value at the end of 2020 was 8 million. So then if we would have kept it at the old amount, my accumulated depreciation for 2021 would have been the 8 million divided by four years, because that's how many years was left. 
So it was straight line. So we were doing 2 million every year anyways. So the new carrying value, if we didn't record the impairment, would have been 6 million. Now let's take a look at the new carrying value. So we'll just go through this methodically. So the cost in two th or was 10 million and the accumulated depreciation was 2 million. And then our carrying value for 2020 was 8 million. Then we recorded the impairment. Of the 1587500, oh, sorry of the 1650000 to have our new carrying value at 2020 represent the recoverable amount, which was the 6350000. Then we recorded depreciation in 2021 based off of that new amount so then we had the 1587500 so now our new carrying value so this is the value on our actual set of books is four seven six two five zero zero now let's see what the fair value was the fair value they're saying is six point five million so we'll put this down here So what I can do is I can write up the asset, but I can't write it all the way up to 6.5 million. I can only go up to the maximum of what it would have been if I kept my depreciation the same and not have recorded the impairment. So I'm capped at the 6 million. So now I'll do my adjusting journal entry. So for December 31st, 2021, I'm going to put a debit into my accumulated impairment losses account. And that would be for the difference of the 6 million minus the 4762500. So that's my Oh, let's see here, six million minus four seven six two five hundred. There we go. So that would be one two three seven five zero zero, and then I'll do a recovery. For that amount. Now, if the fair value was lower than the six million, but higher than the four seven six two five zero zero, then we would re recover the difference to the fair value. But in this case, the fair value was greater than the original carrying value. So that part could be a little bit confusing, but I think with a little bit of practice, it'll start to make sense.